G'day guys, welcome back. In the last video, we spent quite a bit of time talking about relative motion. And specifically what we did was, we found an expression for the absolute velocity of point A when we're dealing with rotating reference frames. And it turned out to be pretty involved. It involved stuff like differentiating unit vectors and cross products and stuff like that. So I strongly recommend that you watch this video first before continuing. Okay, that being said, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the absolute acceleration of point A. And to help us out, I've copied and pasted some stuff which we found from the previous video. Okay, well, to begin with, what we're going to need to do is we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So on the left-hand side, we will have ddt of VA. And on the right-hand side, we will have ddt of VB plus ddt of VREL. But instead of writing VREL, I'm going to write it in its deconstructed form, which we found in the last video, x dot i plus y dot j. Then I'm going to differentiate this term with respect to time, and that'll just be ddt of omega cross rab, like that. Okay, so let's power through this. On the left-hand side, we will have our absolute acceleration of point A, and on the right-hand side, we will have our absolute acceleration of point B, and over here, well, we'll need to apply the chain rule here because i and j are not constant. They change with time. So this will turn into x double dot i plus x dot times by the derivative of your i unit vector plus y double dot j plus y dot times by your derivative of your j unit vector. Notice this right here is the derivative of this term, and this right here is the derivative of this term. I've applied the chain rule to both of these. All right, now let's differentiate this guy. Well, it turns out the chain rule is no different when it comes to cross products. We differentiate one, then times it by this, then differentiate the other, and then times it by that. So it's going to be d dt of omega, our angular velocity vector, crossed with rab plus omega cross the derivative of rab, the position of a relative to b. Okay, let's power through this a little bit more. This right here will turn into the acceleration of b, can't simplify that. But let's group these two terms right here. This will be x double dot i plus y double dot j, like that. So that's these two terms taken care of. Now let's group these two terms together. Noting that the derivative of your j unit vector we found from the previous video is just minus omega i. So let's write that down. It's going to be minus omega y dot i, because we're times it by y dot here. And let's deal with this one. It's going to be x dot times by omega j. So I'm going to write that as omega x dot times by j, like that. All right, that's these terms taken care of. I've grouped them up. Now let's talk about this right here. Well, the derivative of your angular velocity vector, by definition, is your angular acceleration vector. And then that's crossed with r a b. Now let's talk about this term right here. Well, omega, we can't do anything about that. But what's the derivative of r a b? Well, we spent all last video trying to find that. It turns out that the derivative of r a b is just v rel plus omega cross r a b. So let's write that in. It's going to be v rel plus omega cross r a b, r a b like that. And if you don't believe me, watch the previous video and you'll see how I derived this. All right, now let's try and simplify a little bit more. We know this right here can be written as a b plus this term here, which is a rel. And notice we define it as a rel, which I think is a fitting term because this is the derivative we would have if there were no rotating axes. So this is the relative acceleration. This is the acceleration of a relative to b as if omega is zero. Now let's talk about this term right here. It turns out, strangely enough, that this term can also be written as omega cross v rel. And if you don't believe me, I strongly recommend you do the cross product yourself by calculating determinants. And then you will see that this term is in fact equivalent. And if you need help doing the cross product, again, watch my previous video. I show you how to do that. And now let's look at this term right here. This will be alpha cross 
R A B. And here we will have, okay, this splits into two separate terms. This will be omega cross V rel. And then we're going to add that to omega cross omega cross R A B. Omega cross R A B, like that. Wonderful. It turns out we can simplify this a little bit more. It turns out we can group these two terms together. So if we do that, this turns into AB plus A rel plus two omega cross V rel. Now notice that this is your Coriolis acceleration. And from the derivation, it comes from two separate terms, which is why explaining the intuition behind this particular formula is so difficult, right? Um, plus, alpha cross R A B plus we've already dealt with this guy plus omega cross omega cross R A B. And there we have it. This is the formal expression for the absolute acceleration of point A when we're dealing with rotating reference axes. So I know it looks a little bit daunting to see an equation consisting of so many terms. But it turns out that the intuition behind each of these terms can be quite easily explained, and I do so in my summary video. Anyway, guys, I hope this proof made sense, and I hope you learned something. Cheers.